We're here at the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2014 in Busan in the Republic of Korea, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Minister Malcolm Turnbull, who is the Minister for Communications for Australia. Mr. Turnbull, thank you very much for being with us today. Hey, great to be with you again. Now, the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference is held every four years. It's PP14 this year. It's a very much a key event in the ITU's calendar, where ITU member states decide on the future path of ITU. I wanted to ask you, what do you see as the most important outcomes of PP14? Well, it's, it's been a very productive conference. We're almost at the end of the conference, of course, and um, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to be here in the first few weeks, but parliamentary commitments in Australia precluded me being here earlier. But a great work has been done. Uh, the resolutions concerning flight tracking are going to accelerate uh, the ability uh, leading into the World Radio Communications Conference next year to uh, be able to monitor aeroplanes wherever they are in the world. And of course this has been, this, the need for this has been brought into very sharp relief by the uh, tragic and indeed mysterious loss of MH370, uh, lost somewhere, uh, we believe, in the Indian Ocean. Um, this uh, Malaysian aircraft, of course, had a large number of Australians on it as well. Uh, so it's been a shared tragedy of Australia, Malaysia and many other nations. So, you know, it is, it is remarkable uh, that we're here in the 21st century, but we're still using 1950s technology to track uh, aeroplane movements. Well, that's got to change. And the ITU has responded with characteristic uh, uh, dynamism uh, and innovation to rise up to the challenge. I had a very good discussion about that uh, very issue this morning uh, with Francois Rancy, the uh, head of the RADCOM branch at the ITU. And um, I'm confident, to, particularly buoyed up by his remarks, that uh, we'll see within uh, not too many years to come, a universal scheme. Obviously, there's a lot of complexity regarding frequency allocation uh, and so forth uh, to do with that. Apart from that, of course, the ITU's, uh, the Plenipot's uh, response to Ebola uh, has been very encouraging. Uh, clearly, there is, a, there is a, a, a need for a global effort, and the ITU's providing uh, real leadership in that regard to use technology and, and uh, ICT technology in particular to um, tackle Ebola and uh, of course be able to monitor its spread and respond to it uh, quickly. In Australia's view, what should ITU's priorities be in the next four years? Well, the, the, the key priority of the ITU uh, overall is to ensure that everybody in the world has access to telecommunications, to, to to, to broadband, if that's to use a generic term, to very fast broadband. Of course, there's a lot of housekeeping that has to be done at the ITU. You know, we've been pleased to see the progress made in terms of uh, the financial administration of the ITU. And uh, as the Minister for Australia here, I've been very, uh, really very proud to hear so much praise of the efforts of the Australian delegation, which uh, has, it's, it's boxed well above its weight. Uh, it's not a very big delegation, but uh, Caroline Greenway, of course, has been particularly singled out for her chairmanship of the critical committee that's been dealing with the uh, financial administration. But, you know, getting its own house is in order, and that's critically important. This is a very significant uh, plenipotentiary conference, uh, not least because it sees the uh, retirement of uh, Dr. Toure as Secretary General. He's been a, a very persuasive, dynamic, indeed uh, charismatic leader. And he's achieved uh, something that not all uh, leaders are able to achieve, especially in politics, which is a seamless transition to a very well-qualified successor. Uh, Hu Lin Zhao, the, uh, the new Secretary General, is a gentleman with uh, deep experience in the telecom sector and, of course, coming from China, he is, uh, I guess, signifies, uh, embodies uh, the growing importance of uh, China in the world of telecommunications. Um, I've come to know both uh, Dr. Toure and Hu Lin Zhao very well and uh, enjoyed working with Dr. Toure, as indeed has all the, all the Australian delegation. And uh, we, we've worked with Hu Lin Zhao, his uh, capacity as deputy, and now look forward to his 
him taking on the reins as the Secretary General. So it's a, it, it, this has been a, a plenty pot of, um, of change, uh, but also of continuity, because as I've said uh, several times, the, the ITU is at the very heart of humanity. Humans are in their essence social animals. Uh, the, the, most, the most human thing we do, the most human thing we do is to communicate, to engage. That's what love is, the, most, the greatest human virtue. Love is about engagement and caring for others and relating to others. And so the ITU in facilitating that communication is facilitating, enabling humans to be their better selves. When we last talked in May, you described the progress of Australia's national broadband network and the Australian government's philosophy of broadband deployment. I was wondering if there have been any developments since then. Yes, quite a few. Uh, we've completed uh, a cost-benefit analysis of broadband in Australia, which confirmed that the approach that we're taking is uh, the, you know, the, the best one, uh, has a, uh, a net benefit to the Australian community nine times greater than if we had persevered with the all fibre to the premises approach. Um, generally, I would say the, the company is responding very well. Uh, what we've sought to do is to make this big government-owned uh, telco, startup telco that we inherited from our political predecessors, a pre previous government, um, we've sought to make it operate as far as it can as a commercial entity and therefore be focused on the customer, focused on the needs of the customer and not to be fixated on the uh, technology as an ideology. So in other words, the object of the country and this is analogous to what I was saying earlier about the ITU. The object of the country should be to ensure that everyone in Australia gets access to very fast broadband as soon as possible and at an affordable price. What technology should be used? Well, that depends on the circumstances. If you have a good legacy infrastructure like HFC that you can use to deliver very high speeds quickly with, with uh, you know, upgrades to you know, DOCSIS 3 and beyond, uh, then do that. There's no need to overbuild that with fibre. Uh, if you can deliver very fast speeds using uh, vectored VDSL and avoid having to replace the last several hundred metres of copper, uh, then do that. And so, in other words, the NBN is starting to think and operate the way big telcos do elsewhere in the world. Swisscom in you know, your hometown of Geneva or, in, um, you know, or Deutsche Telekom in Germany, BT in the UK and so forth. And it's, it, it's just, it is, the, the critical thing is not to confuse the means with the end. Technology, uh, whether it's fixed line, whether it's HFC, whether it's VDSL, whether it's GPON, whether it's wireless, uh, or is just a means to an end. The object is that everybody should have access to very fast broadband. It is the great democratising uh, power that we have, and, and democratising not in a political sense. But, you know, the internet is the most remarkable invention uh, of, of mankind ever. There is nothing, it, it, is, it is so pervasive, so transformative, it is changing the world, and I think in some respects changing us. Uh, and it's, it's vital that everybody is able to have access to that. And so we just have to focus on the outcome and then use whatever technology makes sense in a particular place at a particular time. The Australian government recently announced a review of its spectrum management framework. To conclude, I wanted to ask you what will be included in the review and what you hope the review will achieve? Well, the, the object is to bring spectrum management again into the 21st century. It hasn't been looked at uh, for over a decade. Uh, we want to, the aim is to simplify uh, spectrum licensing, so there's just one class of license, uh, and also to ensure that spectrum is managed uh, in a manner that maximises its utility. You know, we have, again, we have so many technologies that enable us to use spectrum more efficiently uh, for the various, you know, in the world of, uh, of uh, video uh, and, and broadcasting, of course, particularly, you know, going to MPEG-4, MPEG-5 and beyond, that obviously enables you to use spectrum more efficiently, the way in which uh, so much of our video um, entertainment and information and communication is transmitted over the top. I mean, I've just been here just before this interview, one of our former 
uh, Prime Ministers, Gough Whitlam, very famous Australian leader, died recently at the great old age of 98, and his memorial service is being held in Sydney today. And I was watching it in, in what appeared to me to be high definition, streamed over the net on my handheld device here in Busan. You know, in, so, so, you know, this convergence of everything to, on or at least towards the internet is dr dramatically changing the way we view spectrum. And so we have to look at it in a more uh, holistic way and ask ourselves, you know, what is the best way we can use spectrum uh, and allocate spectrum without getting, um, if you like, fixated on, on, on apparatuses or, you know, apparatus licenses that, that they will be a thing of the past. I know they've been a bit of an Australian idiosyncrasy, I've been reminded occasionally, <laughs> but, all, but generally, uh, are we looking to a transition towards more and more of our um, telecom going over the top over IP. And I think the, that, that is, seems to be the inexorable trend and that obviously has implications for spectrum allocation. But it, it, I'd say as a, as a general point, regulation, legislation and regulation, administration tends to, uh, is it, I guess it's always going to be behind uh, techno technological innovation. I don't think it can ever, it's unlikely to ever be ahead. Uh, but the critical thing is to make sure that you, your regulatory environment is as far as possible uh, technology agnostic, so that as technology evolves, uh, your regulation is broad enough to accommodate it. And insofar as that isn't the case, you have to be prepared to take stock regularly and update. You can't, you know, we're not talking about the laws of the Medes and the Persians, you know, set down for thousands of years. We are in a dynamic environment and governments have to have to recognise that the laws that worked 10 years ago, even five years ago, will have to change with, uh, with technology. Well, Minister Malcolm Temple, thank you very much thank for you. being in the studio with us today and we very much look forward to catching up with you again. Sir. Thank you. and it's, it's, it's wonderful to be here and I want to congratulate the ITU on, this, uh, on the plenty pot and this very significant uh, sesquicentenary. Thank you very much. Thank you.